had the opportunity to spend several days at General Motors' Milford Proving Ground with some of the key engineers behind the brand new Corvette ZR1, and more importantly, the LT7 engine, a twin turbocharged V8 making over a thousand horsepower. And while we produced an over 50 minute long technical video, we realize that not everybody has time for that. So consider this a quick look and walk around with the small block assistant chief engineer, Dustin Gardner, where he goes over all the details of the engine and some of the technical tidbits. All right, here we have a LT7 engine and it might look a little different being all covered in marker. This is a very special engine. This is one of our first plant built engines that we used for very late development, all our final power work. And this is actually the one that ran our SAE power certification. So this engine's kind of making its round through the development feet. Everybody's gonna put their name on this engine that had a fingerprint on it. And it's gonna become a really cool museum piece uh, to be out there for all to see. So it's pretty special and a cool one to show you guys what um, is unique on the LT7. Obviously, eyes are drawn to very large 76 millimeter turbos. And you can see the integrated Manny turbo housing behind that um, feeding into the turbine wheel here. As we've stated, the distance here from the compressor up to the charge air cooler on the engine is very short. And these charge air coolers are very big, which leads to our very efficient extraction of heat of the very hot compressed air coming out of that turbocharger. And then the electric wastegate actuators and boost control. We have boost control here. Then you can only see the front end of it, but this is actually our electric wastegate control there that can then control the wastegate in the, in the back side of the turbo. That feeding up the engine feeds up into our very good looking edge blue intake manifolds. Unlike the LT6, this is an option. Every LT7 intake manifold will be this edge blue. Once again, very short air path from our chair air coolers to our throttle bodies into this much lower volume intake manifold that is split left to right. And then nestled down in here is the secondary port fuel system that we, uh, seamlessly blend DI and um, port fuel together for various power and emission reasons with that. And yeah, the fact that this is the cool power cert engine, right? Here's the date we ran it on, the power numbers, and some of the lead engineers that were working late that night. Accessory drive, front cover, all this is the common Gemini architecture stuff. Same oil tank. Actually, to go back to the LT7 was there from the beginning, and if you look at an LT6 in light of an LT7 today, I'm surprised nobody asked, why do we have this goofy oil tank shape on an LT6? There's nothing down there. What's just missing on this engine is the fresh air tube it goes right through here. So we had architected the oil tank that's common between the two for the LT7. Same thing with there's a seventh scavenge stage across the bottom of the LCC on every LT6 that doesn't go anywhere. That's where the turbo oil lines plug into. Once again, those parts are all in there, not an afterthought. We didn't slap turbos on an LT6. They were from day one integrated design together to be these two different engines. But so to start off some of the biggest difference in the parts of doing all the work, um, so the connecting rods are unique, LT6 to LT7. You can see the shorter connecting rod on this side with the much bigger pin end. Um, it's bigger obviously to support the bigger pin for the higher combustion pressures and heavier piston, but also it's, it's shorter because that dish piston with much more structure to it and the much thicker, bigger pin, we had to move the pin physically lower in the engine as it relates to the piston. And then in comparison, LT6, LT7, wrist pins, much beefier, much thicker, much heavier, doing a lot more work. So this enables the higher boost pressures, the, the higher loading. Um, but obviously with the LT6, the name of the game is light, light, light to get to that 8600 RPM because all the forces are squared with speed. So that extra 600 RPM doesn't sound like a lot, but it's huge. And then you can see in the topology of the pistons, LT6, very pronounced peak to get the CR up, big, big dish on the LT7 to get the compression ratio down. And then to manage that mass and combustion loading, you can see the pin bore is much beefier on the LT7 compared to the LT6 as well. So all built components, very purpose-built for high speed naturally aspirated, purpose-built for 
high boost levels, high power levels, LT7. So with that, to take a look at the turbocharger, we have our large 76 millimeter. You can see the ported shroud on our monitor scroll turbo here. Electric boost control valve right here coming down. We have our turbo speed sensor, which this allows us to run the turbos right up to their red line. Um, actively knowing what that speed is in between the electric wastegate control and the speed sensor will close loop control on the turbo. Our wastegate linkage is here. Fortunately, this one doesn't have a wastegate on it. Um, but then you can see into the very large 67 millimeter Mar alloy turbine wheel and our wastegate door itself. This is the wheel that allows us to run gas temperatures in ex exceeding 1000 degrees Celsius. This is an example of one of our very large on-engine air-to-water intercoolers. Once again, very big, and we have two of these on the engine to, to manage the, the airflow on a per-bank basis. And these sit right on the cam cover, feed right up into our LT7-specific intake manifold. It is truly independent left to right. You can see it down the middle. It's actually mirror images of each other. We make them out, out of the same molding tool um, so they're, they're really Im mirror images of each other. Then in every LT7 intake manifold, we'll have our builder's badge. Because like the LT6, all of these LT7s will be built on the same hand-built assembly line in Bowling Green, Kentucky by our skilled engine builders. So here's an example of the LT7's crankshaft. It is, I like to say, 99% common with the LT6. Obviously still a forged steel flat plane crank crankshaft. Uh, the one additional feature the LT7 crankshaft has over the LT6 is we do a little bit of additional machining on the end counterweights. That's because of the piston changes we talked about earlier. The piston sits lower in relation to the deck face and has a longer skirt to support those higher horsepower levels. So with that, we needed to create a little bit more clearance to the counterweights with the LT7 unique piston. Moving from the Z06 into the ZR1 from a transmission perspective, uh, it carries the same general transmission case. We have the same gear ratios. However, there's a bunch of changes internally in the transmission to handle the torque of the LT7 compared to the LT6. There are wider gears and the output drive is strength is greatly increased. So the dedicated unique cylinder head casting for the LT7, once again, not sharing parts with the LT6, um, kind of the two biggest reasons we went with a dedicated uh, casting for the LT7 is the combustion chamber does have unique features throughout the outer radius or diameter of it, but the big one is up in this peak here. And to do that, we need to add significant combustion volume to the LT7. We're moving from 12 and a half down to 9.8 to one. That's a big shift in combustion ratio. So that added volume there in conjunction with this big dish in our head gives us our combustion volume we needed to get that lower compression ratio. And as you can see in the cylinder head, shared with the LT6, what we're still doing is these combustion chambers are fully CNC. This is 100% in production. LT6 and LT7, just real jewelry. And what this allows us to do is maintain very tight controls of that combustion chamber geometry. Once again, for combustion efficiency, emissions, things like that. But the other thing it really enables us is very consistent power output end to engine because there's no as cast variation in any of these features in there. And as you can see up the intake ports, we see and see the entire length of the uh, intake port on both the LT6 and LT7. The other place the LT7 cylinder head deviates drastically from the LT6 is along the exhaust side, where the LT6 will be wanting to turn that exhaust flow up and out in an even pattern these are turning it inward and down. And you can even see the asymmetrical pattern of the exhaust ports. This is to line up with the best packaging we could do with the integrated turbine manifold that we have on there. So you can see these are drastically, the end one's bringing it inward. And because the turbine's here, these two are bunched closer together, once again, with the firing order to line up into that turbine wheel. The first time a customer brings out an LT7 and a ZR1, I can't really dictate to them what I would like them to feel. The engine and its immense capability in the car is going to do the 
brute force thing you think it's going to do on its own and overwhelm anything I can put into words. But what I would say to the customer, especially the first time you run it through second gear, through the, thir the, the second, third gear shift and feel the acceleration in third gear at speed, is try to be conscious and remember the colorful words that come out of your mouth.